welcome everybody to our program on addiction and recovery from the Sunshine Coast Health Center up here in Powell River, BC. And one of the alumni suggested a topic for this series, and that was the history of addiction treatment, which is a very complicated uh, uh, story, and certainly we don't have enough time to do it here, but we'll pick out a handful of things. But one of the key things to remember about addiction treatment is it's all based on how people make sense of this excessive drinking or excessive drug use. So, for example, uh, 2,500 years ago, a very famous Greek uh, playwright by the name of Euripides, he, he wrote this play called the Bacchants, after Bacchus, which is a, always a, the Roman god of, of, of wine. But the play is very interesting because I'll give you the plot here. So Pentheus, the young king, uh, has been away from his kingdom for a while. Uh, now, while he's been away, the god uh, uh, Dionysus, uh, which is the Greek god of wine and, and sex, put it that way, he's been whipping up uh, all the women into this uh, drunken, orgiastic ecstasy. Okay, so Pentheus comes home and discovers this, and oh, it's just disgusted. Oh, and he has to, we got to bring back a healthy mindedness and good order back to the kingdom. So he, he creates this plan to achieve this. <clears throat> and unfortunately for Pentheus, the drunken women tear him limb from limb. And the Balkans is a cautionary tale to those people who are naive enough to believe that drunkenness can be defeated. Okay. Because what uh, Euripides was saying is it was this intoxication that made people feel vital and energized and alive. Okay? So an, an interesting take on it. And that was from about 2,500 years ago in uh, ancient Greece. But this kind of idea, right? Uh, how It's how contemporary society looks at things. Um, we know that uh, a lot of the medieval sermons uh, the clergy, and the, uh, the clergy railed against drunkenness, but drunkenness wasn't considered particularly bad or worse than, uh, say, for example, gluttony. In fact, Dante, uh, the great, great poet in that gigantic 500-page uh, poem he wrote of the Divine Comedy, he reserved a place in hell for the gluttons, but not for the, the drunkards. So this is interesting, right? Eh? So even in medieval times, drunkenness was not considered really as bad a sin as gluttony. And in, and in any event, these sorts of things were all, um, this was uh, a sin because it was not moderate behavior. Right? And we can speed up and go into various centuries, but the key point is everybody looks at things a little differently. And even today, for example, the way, for example, the Italians uh, view drinking alcohol versus, for example, the United States with its prohibitionist attitudes are, are very different. Right? So how you treat uh, excessive uh, alcohol use or intoxication depends on how the culture and how the society uh, uh, views it. At any rate, uh, in our little history of treatment, um, uh, it's important to know that, for example, the term alcoholism uh, was basically coined by this uh, Swedish uh, physician, uh, Magnus Huss, if that's how you pronounce it, in 1849. Uh, before then, uh, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, uh, Benjamin Rush, <coughs> a medical doctor, he, he had actually talked of drinking excessively as a disease. So fairly recent, that was in 1794, I believe, but so this idea of addiction or alcoholism or disease, this is a relatively recent phenomenon. And even the term alcoholism, it was, a, it was one of many terms around inebriates, uh, uh, dipsomania, all, all of these terms, and alcoholism won out. Uh, the suggestion is because it was used by very influential thinkers in the field. For example, I believe it was E.M. Jelinek at Yale Center for Alcohol Studies was one of the, uh, one of the key uh, people who influenced the, creating the term uh, or using the term alcoholism as opposed to dipsomania and some of the others that were going on at the time. 
So a fairly recent thing, and one of the uh, one of the key things, there were these societies that were going on at the turn of the century from the 18th to the 1900s. But uh, I thought we'd spend a little time talking about Towns Hospital, mainly because, I mean, there's a very good link here with uh, Bill Wilson and the 12-step program. Uh, because it was at uh, Towns Hospital that Bill Wilson was a, finally able to sober up and, and go on and create the 12-step program for us. So uh, uh, Charles Towns is a really remarkable fellow, and um, actually a, a chance of uh, meeting uh, some some fellow suggested that he had the cure for alcoholism, and I, I think that was in 1902 or 1904, somewhere around there. Anyway, uh, Towns was very interested in this, and at any rate, he uh, created this uh, this hospital, and it eventually uh, became known as uh, uh, the Towns Hospital. Uh, and, and it was for basically privileged alcoholics, people who had some money. Uh, Bill Wilson got in there mainly because his wife, Lois, uh, her family members, uh, uh, medical doctors, and they pulled some strings and got him in there. But Towns Hospital had this uh, sort of cure for alcoholism. And what it was was a, a, this, a mixture of belladonna, this one of the key feed users, and then some other chemicals. And, and they would give it to the patients every hour, I believe, for 50 hours. And after that, you would be, uh, the, the patient would be detoxed. And uh, one fellow uh, actually said, well, you feel a little shaky, but you're clear-minded, and so you can leave. And, and treatment was maybe 10 days, maybe 14 days, somewhere around there. And probably, I believe, could have been as, as few as four or five days as well. But, but Towns Hospital was, was fundamentally important, not only for Bill Wilson, uh, but because uh, Towns believed that, uh, that what, what alcoholism was, was a, a, pathol a biological pathology. So it was a problem. So if you drank enough alcohol, you poisoned yourself. That was the idea behind it. So, so it was a biological phenomenon, which at that time was very interesting because uh, most people thought that, well, we should put them in an asylum, you know, these alcoholics, because oh, they can't stop drinking. So put them in an asylum because they were all crazy, things like that, right? And Towns said, no, 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 uh, asylums don't work. I mean, all, the, all this kind of stuff, putting them in jail doesn't work. None, none of that works. The only, because you have to recognize this biological foundation under it. So anyway, he created this, uh, this cure. Uh, probably wouldn't go over really well in the medical community today, but he created this cure and did help uh, uh, a lot of people. But at any rate, uh, that was, uh, that was uh, Charles Towns, and uh, we'll be back uh, next time uh, with a little more recent uh, uh, version of treatment.